NFL offseason programs are starting, which means the draft is in the rear view mirror. Most of free agency is in the books. Who improved the most? Who has the most work to do? Let's get into it. You are Locked On NFL, your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi again, everyone, and welcome into Locked On NFL. He is Chris Carter. I'm James Rapine, and this is the Locked On NFL podcast. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube, follow wherever you get your podcast. And today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Today's episode uh, makes every moment more like FanDuel does. And right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. And Chris... Most of the offseason is in the books. There are some free agents that we will get to later in the show still available that can help teams. But with most of the offseason over, which teams have improved the most? That's where we're going to start today's show. And, and when, I, when I ask you that question, what's the first team that comes to mind? Man, there's a bunch of teams that, that I think that did a lot of work this offseason. I look at the Baltimore Ravens. I look at what they what they added at corner and wide receiver in the draft. I think that uh, guys like Nate Wiggins, the guys like uh, Tess Walker, I think that those guys can make a difference in areas that they need help in. And the it also because the Ravens were a team that was on the cusp last year. I mean, they were they were banging with the Chiefs in the AFC Championship game at home. Um, and I, I think that that's where and you also look at what they how they added Derrick Henry to the backfield, giving a dynamic player there um, in what they were able to do. I think that they have a chance to make this the statement year. We're like, hey, you know, we're 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 gonna punch through. We can win the AFC in a talented conference and get to the Super Bowl finally with Lamar Jackson. I think that they've they you know they were able to keep Matt Abuike. I think that's that's gonna be, that's huge for them. Um, and they were able to go in the draft and get skilled players that are going to be important for their for what they need right now. So I look at the Baltimore Ravens and I'm impressed by what they what they've added. And I think they've kept enough to still be in, in contention as one of the best teams in the conference. Yeah, I, I think that's a, an interesting one. I'll stick with the AFC because when I think of most improved, I think of a team last year that I liked. I liked the moves that they made but we didn't know C.J. Stroud was going to be C.J. Stroud. Mm. So they became a playoff team a year early. This is the real year where the Texans are supposed to be a playoff team and supposed to make a run, and they added a lot. Stephon Diggs, Daniil Hunter, Danico yes. Autry, uh, Aziz Alshair, all of those guys to me are instant upgrades and going to help where you need it, where you have a dynamic playmaker on the outside. You have a pass rush, two pass rushers in Autry and Hunter, and uh, Al Shair stabilizes that linebacker room. I didn't love the Joe Mixon trade. Obviously, I, I covered Joe Mixon for a long time. I think giving mm -hmm. him the contract was risky, but adding the player for a seventh round pick is good value. So there's a difference. I guess I didn't mind the trade. I did mind the the extension, but it's not my money. And so does Joe Mixon make them better from what they did have after losing their starting running back in free agency? Yeah, he's certainly going to start for them and stabilizes that running back room. And I also like the flyer on Jeff Akuda as well. So free agency-wise, it lines up. Obviously, they uh, were able to build on a team playoff-wise that was a force to be reckoned with, is surprised, mm -hmm. impressed, beat the Browns, whatever you want to say. And, and so now I, I think there will be a lot of people that pick them to win the AFC. And I'm not sure I'm there yet, but I do think that they're one of the teams that have improved the most. I think that's a, that's a good pick there. I I also think they they were in a natural position where they had to kind of strike in free agency because they didn't have a first round pick because they were going they you know, they had their their draft capital as it was, and they did just that. They addressed positions of need, and then in the draft they went and got they added to the secondary with Lassiter and Bullock. They got a, an extra guy on the offensive line and Blake Fisher. But like you said, they also addressed things in free agency to make it so that like hey you know. They, you know, the, these are the positions that they're going to be adding here. They're going to contribute a lot sooner, whereas some of these rookies that they're bringing in, they could kind of ease their way into it. So certainly think the Houston Texans did themselves some favors in this uh, in, in this in this offseason where they were able to add talent um, in a lot in a lot of key areas here. Um, so I, I think that they're they're certainly putting themselves in a in a good in this good spot, especially with they were another one of those teams that were on the cusp, you know, with looking at where they are. Um, and I also wonder. 
you know, with CJ Stroud, when I always think when you have a second year quarterback who lit it up the first year, every team in the NFL, especially teams in your division, are going to study every lick of tape. They're going to look at every every everything, every pass, everything that you got that you guys do, your tendencies. And they're going to say, okay, we're going to see what you actually did last year, and now we're going to counter it. And so, one of the best ways to build off of that is to make it less obvious what you know you know what you're doing add talent in different areas so that that young quarterback doesn't have as much pressure to do that so i do think that they did a pretty good job there as far as a- adding talent another team i'm going to put in this conversation though i'm going to i'm going to look at the washington commanders because mm, love I, their draft yes I, go ahead you, you got to love their draft and they added a ton of talent in free agency they, they added a center title be um that, that was there they got austin eckler in for a, a, for an effective backfield now um and they they were able to kind of spread you'll get guys like jeremy chin even just smaller signings where they were able to do that in free agency but then like you said when you bring in the draft that they had they got in jane daniels so now they have that that new franchise quarterback they got jerzon newton for amazing value in the 30 at the 36th overall pick mike sanders still as their slot corner guy to add there. And even Ben Sinat out of, out of the tight end out of Kansas State. And then Brandon Coleman, another great, great value there. And then Luke McCaffrey, like you said, the, the draft was just stacked with guys picked at really good positions there. I, I'm not sure the Washington Commanders are going to just come up in the a- a- NFC East right away. But I do think that they have now laid the building blocks to actually take steps forward with the new regime running the organization and to try to put all the problems of the Dan Snyder past behind them and charge forward into this new future with all these new young young players. Yeah, I, I like it. I like that you mentioned the Washington Commanders because it's easy to see the vision. It starts at quarterback. I think they are much better at quarterback. They're more dynamic at quarterback. They have a potential star on their hands. And you have weapons around him. It's it's the same situation. If you have a young guy, you want to put weapons around him. You want to put pieces around him. And I love their draft. I did. I, I think that they added a lot of key key pieces that can help right away. And and there were also some pieces like an Austin Eckler, by the way, that that still might have something in that Cliff Kingsbury offense with with Jane Daniels. Like now, I I can see the vision when Eckler first signed there. I could not necessarily see the vision. I was like, oh, I don't mm-hmm. really like that, but. Uh, now I certainly do, and I think it could work. And so uh, the the commanders make the cut as well. I have one more team that I want to mention, and then we'll get to some teams as well that, well, might need to improve a little bit and add some free agents or, or make a push here between now and training camp to better their roster via trade or otherwise. So we'll get to one more team at least. Maybe, Chris, you have another one, but at least one more team that caught my eye this offseason and then some teams that have some work to do coming up next. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That means you throw 5 bucks if you think the Nuggets are going to rally and win game three against the Timberwolves. Throw 5 bucks on it, and you get $150 in bonus bets. Boom. Just like that if the Nuggets win the game. Or maybe you just think that it's going to continue to roll and Ant-Man and the Timberwolves are going to handle business and go up 3-0 when they go home. I can't believe they're up 2-0. They could be up 3-0. Well, go that route. And it's not just NBA, NHL, Major League Baseball is in full swing. And that's why you got to get in on the action right now with FanDuel, where, again, you can get 150 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and so much more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make every playoff shot count. FanDuel. America's number one sports book. We're back here in the Locked On NFL podcast. Chris Carter, James Rapine, talking about the most improved teams out of free agency in the NFL draft. I do have to say, like you said in that ad read, the Wolves are cooking the Nuggets right Ooh. now. And Edwards is a Ooh. bad man. I mean, they, the stare downs, the talk. They're, they're, they got Jamal Murray throwing heat packs at them while the game's going on. It's pretty crazy. What was he but, thinking? He was thinking, man, we getting cooked. <laughs> that's, 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 that's what he was thinking. I don't need any more heat. I get no more heat. <laughs> oh, my. But the, that, that series is nasty. But the NBA playoffs are a lot of fun, fun to watch. Check out all our Locked On NBA shows for all the great ad- advances in the playoff there. But let's get back to NFL talk here. James, you had a great tease there. Who's this, this, this secret improved team that you were talking about at the end of last segment? It's a team 
that people are going to overlook. But the Arizona Cardinals, Chris Carter, are much improved. They are a better team. They are a well-rounded team. They added a, a ton of free agents. Jonah Williams at right tackle to stabilize their offensive line. Get a key special teamer in Chris Moore. Sean Murphy bunting. Mac Wilson. Uh, they, they also added Justin Jones, Bilal Nichols, two defensive linemen that can help in the trenches. And then they go out and they get Marvin Harrison Jr., yep. who is going to have such a huge impact right away. I, I just I, I think when you add those type of guys in free agency, kind of stabilizers that aren't, aren't superstars, but stabilizers, you have your quarterback in Kyler Murray, and then you give him a gifted weapon like a, a Marvin Harrison Jr. It's it's the way to go, and and they did it. And so I I think you know I'm not going to say they're going to win the NFC West or anything like that, but I do think that they're going to be really really. Solid, and so we'll see. But I, I think that they they did a good job for sure this offseason. I'm with you. That would have been another team that I mentioned there. Not just Marvin Harrison Jr. I love the pick of Darius Robinson. You talked about the Agreed. defensive line additions. He can be a guy that flexes around. I when I talked to him at the combine because the Steelers were talking to him, uh, he he was like, "Look, I'll play inside, outside. Just put me wherever. I'm going after the quarterback." And I was like. I like somebody that talks like that. He has a great build. He has a great, uh, great athletic profile. Liked him there. I also love the pick of Max Melton uh, in the second round. Mm -hmm. Max Melton was one of the more flexible corners in this draft, so he can line up in the slot. He can line up outside. But if they also want a guy in the slot, they got a guy in Daydream Taylor Demerson as, as a safety who could who could jump in there. I like Elijah Jones where they got him at 90th overall. And by the way, they added another running back in Trey Benson, one of the better running backs of this class, for great value in the 66th overall pick. So to me, they like like you said, they got one of the biggest stars of the NFL draft, maybe the best overall player. If you, if you think that Marvin Harrison Jr. is just the best wide receiver and is better at his job than any of the quarterbacks were at their jobs. And then added several important guys that can help them in different parts of the roster on top of the free agency period that you were talking about there. So, uh, Arizona Cardinals could be making noise in a, in an NFC West division that could be very competitive, but let's talk about some of the teams that need to do more work here, James. Is there a team on your list that you think that, like, hmm, this is a team that they may, maybe they added some talent, but they still got a long way to go? The Denver Broncos. Yeah. They, they come to mind where it's just like, all right, you got Bo Nix. And I like Troy Franklin, by the way. So I like some of their draft, but it's all right. You trade Jerry Judy. I get it. You didn't want to pay him. What's, what's the direction? Is Bo Nix in a situation where he's going to be able to win now? Is is this team is Sean Payton set up for it? Is does he get another mulligan after last year with the Russell Wilson experiment? Like it's just they're in this unique in between, and now they have the first round quarterback, and I'm not sure they have the weapons enough weapons around him that you would want. And there's there's questions about Cortland Sutton and him wanting a contract. I mean, there's just there's a lot there where it's just kind of ah, I don't know. And so maybe it comes together, but it's a tough division. And it's a tough division because you have a Harbaugh in your division. Obviously, we know about Mahomes. And so it's it's going to be one of those things where we'll see. It wouldn't shock me if they finished last in the division, though, which is obviously not what they brought Sean Payton in to do. That's going to be a rough spot because, they, like you said, the, I mean, the AFC West is already competitive. And I'm not so sure that Bo Nix moves, moves a needle. And they have so many other places to rebuild. And, like, right now, they're still paying Russell Wilson $38 million. Like, that's – they're just in a rough spot right now. So like maybe it's gonna maybe it's gonna be part of a longer rebuild, but man, the Broncos certainly are there. I'll give you another team that selected a first round quarterback that I think didn't do enough to improve this offseason. And maybe part of it's just the natural place of where they are. But the Minnesota Vikings, um, I'm not so sure that JJ McCarthy is going to be and you get you and I talked about this all offseason. We neither of us were big on this. JJ McCarthy should be, you know, a top five pick for what he was. He ended up getting picked 10th overall. You put him on this offense with Jordan Addison and Justin Jefferson, and like if if he comes out and he and he's guns ablaze and he's hitting everything, great. But that's not what he did at Michigan. He was a ground and pound, you know, played off of that Jim Harbaugh style uh, there. And so I'm not so sure that that fits exactly what they're trying to do with the, with their offense. They I know they added Aaron Jones in the offseason, but uh, like 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 is that is that going to be enough to balance things out? And to figure out some of the and to, to fix some of the weaknesses they had from last year, their uh their their offseason, their, their free agency, they got Blake Cashman at linebacker, but they didn't bring in any like super offensive linemen. I just 
I think that the Vikings could be in a position where they needed, like, like the Broncos, they added a young quarterback. And I think I like, look, I love Dallas Turner. I thought that was a great pick at 17. I was a big Kyrie Jackson guy going into the drafts. So getting me a 108 is nice, but I think that they're in a position where they're going to have to develop still a bit more around this young quarterback. And I'm not a hundred percent sure that this will translate into instant success. And this might be something they need to keep building on next year before I think we see the full vision of what the Vikings are doing right now. Yeah, I'll stick with the, the rookie quarterback theme. The Patriots didn't do enough in free agency. Agreed. They, they should have been in on weapons, proven weapons. And draft-wise, they tried to fix that. I mean, they drafted a ton. Uh, in fact, uh, were all of their draft picks offense? All but one. Yeah. Uh, were, were off, or, yeah, one. And then they signed a bunch of college free agent defensive players. But they tried. You know, I like Javon Baker. I like Jalen Polk. I like Caden Wallace. Those are three prospects I really, really like. I don't want Drake May to be throwing to Jalen Polk, Kendrick Bourne coming off of an ACL, Demario Douglas, Pop Douglas, KJ Osborne, Javon Baker, Juju Smith-Schuster, Jalen Rager. Like, you get my point here. None mm -hmm. of those guys are worth double teaming, just to give you an idea. Now, maybe Baker comes on and be becomes that. Maybe Jalen Polk comes on and becomes that. But... Looking at it, they kept Hunter Henry. I like that move. I like Ramondre Stevenson. I think he's kind of underrated at this point. They went out and got Antonio Gibson in free agency. Fine. But you needed one more wide receiver. And I just, I don't know why they didn't go out and get it. Maybe it's because they extended Kendrick Bourne. It's a risky deal anyways. I like Baker. I like Polk. So I, I it's not about not liking what they did in the draft. I thought they should have done more in free agency, though. Especially because I get taking Drake May. I would have taken Drake May third overall because if you think he can be a franchise quarterback, that's what you do. You take him. You don't wait. You don't try to trade up, trade down, move all around, get picks. All. No, no, no. We just talked. You just talked about JJ McCarthy. Get your guy. And so May was their guy. But man, it would have been nice if they had gotten another receiver to support him. Uh, I agree. I think that they're in a, they're they're in a tough position there. I want to talk about another team that I think needs to improve. And you and I talked about them as one of the teams that didn't hit as well as they should have in the NFL draft. And that's the Dallas Cowboys. Um, I think that like, you know, I think they're still in a tough division with the Eagles and the NFC East. Um, I think that they Guyton could turn into that guy on the offensive line, but I think he's a guy that's going to need time. And this is a Cowboys team that needs to strike now because the, their core, everything with that, with Dak, with CD, I, th I think that they're in a position where they are going to have to hit and hit and hit these guys soon. Cooper Beebe, I think, can develop into a really good guard. I'm just not sure if he's raring to go right right now. Um, and you look at you know talent that they were able to bring in this year, uh, you know, in free agency, it wasn't a whole lot of like new guys that are going to change everything. I think the Cow Cowboys are kind of stuck with who they were last year, and that wasn't good enough. And so maybe maybe it's just a, a, a reapproach to it. Maybe fixing, maybe just kind of coming in with a, a better start to the year will change things. But the Cowboys are a team that I'm looking at that they they're 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 going to be one of those teams that are coming. They have they have the people to win, but they just didn't add any new pieces after failing to do it last year. So I'd be a little wary about if I'm if I'm fans in Dallas right now about coming in and thinking this is a year where they're going to take that step up from what they've been doing for the past however many years. I agree with you. I do. This felt like a year where they should push, and it's kind of the opposite. They're pulling back. They're questioning things. They didn't get a playmaker early in the draft, which ugh, was not something I expected. I thought they would. And so we'll see. We'll, we'll see if it pays off. They brought back Zeke Elliott, and that's a low-risk move. Not much there. But right. uh, no, I, I, I do not love uh, what the Cowboys have done. And heck, one of their former players is going to come – up uh, on our next part of the show, the best remaining free agents. There are some quality guys out there still, Chris, that could help the Cowboys. Maybe uh, reunite with a familiar face that isn't Zeke Elliott. We will get to those names coming up next. But first, I want to remind you, this show is also brought to you by Monopoly Go. Flag on the play. I know everyone is like, hey, guys, you guys talk about Monopoly Go all the time. But hey, it's because it's such a fun game. 
and you got to get on it right now. You're not just playing Monopoly Go by yourself and, and just with random people. You can team up with your friends. You don't have to just beat them in the games. You, you and your friends can go into different time tournaments, work together, and build up each other's boards, build up cities together where you're building up the best properties. And the more you win together, the more awesome prize that you unlock, prizes that you unlock. You guys can get unique stickers that when you combine them all together, you can complete albums for even bigger prizes in the game. You also get cool new playing pieces to travel the boards with and hilarious emojis to taunt your friends when you're smashing their buildings or heisting their vaults. Monopoly Go feels like a new exciting game every single day because every day there's new tournaments that are changing with different challenges. A ton include their own mini games like you could dig for treasure or play a robot pachinko machine, but always there's new time events that help you win big, massive get prizes with multipliers and different ways to, to win and bring money in in Monopoly. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go, the app that's been downloaded over 150 million times. So get off the bench and go download it now for free on Google Play or the App Store. Monopoly Go, game on. Let's keep things rolling on a Wednesday edition of Locked on NFL. And Chris, there are plenty of free agents still available. I hinted at the Dallas Cowboys because Stephon Gilmore is just out there. He's just hanging out there. Yeah. Still. And, and yeah. I, I think he's a quality corner. He's no longer the lockdown Stephon Gilmore no. we remember, but he's still a damn good corner. And so he's he's one of the top guys on my list that's still available. I certainly look at him as a, as a guy that could be added in a lot of different places where you just like, hey, we just need a body. Just put him, put him, put him out there. Just like, like, we, like and he's he's a veteran. He's plug and play. He could he could certainly fit 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 in there. Um, that'll be someone that I think could be one of those players who ma who makes a difference. You know, what? I'm gonna go with another cornerback, and I, I want to see make make sure that he is you know, fully healthy. I know it came out recently that he is medically cleared, but I want to see how he's, you know, he may be med medically cleared from his injury, but I want to see if he's actually running. I want to look at Xavier Howard because that's a dude who was a difference maker for the Dolphins. He's still a free agent. Uh, it came, it came out from pro football rumors that he was medically cleared to play. Um, but I want to see that he is back to being who he was before, because if he is, he's a guy that you can add to most teams and he's a, he could be a difference maker in that secondary, much like Stephon Gilmore. So we're talking about older guys here who've been in the NFL, who've been proven cornerbacks, guys that used to be in conversations for defensive play of the year and stuff. But I think that that would be, those would be two interesting additions there on the defensive side of the ball who could, who could stand out. But I also want to get to this guy. And this is a person that you have a lot of experience covering, covering Tyler Boyd. I, I was very shocked to see that he has gone on sign, unsigned this far into free agency. He's a person the Steelers have talked about signing, what I talked about, who have been rumored that the Steelers have been wanting to sign. But I think that he's trying to hold out to get the best price available. And I'm wondering which team will give it to him because to me, he's the best receiver in free agency right now. Yeah, it's it's interesting because in who knows, maybe they signed someone in the, the next 12 hours or so before this airs. <laughs> but Zay Jones visited Tennessee this week mm. after they brought in Tyler Boyd last week. And Brian Callahan was obviously the Bengals OC, coached Tyler Boyd for five seasons. And so Boyd leaves without a deal. He visited the Chargers last week. And what did the Chargers do? They went out and, and they signed a receiver from uh, the former Jacksonville receiver. Um, uh, what's his uh, name? Number 17. I'm, like I'm seeing his name. Uh I'm Chargers son. DJ Chark. So oh, Chark, it's right. it's like, man, and, and I know they're different receivers, but it's like, okay, like different styles. But mm -hmm. where are you going to land, Tyler? And so I do think that that's interesting. And he's uh, near the top of my list, too, of someone that I, I did think would sign, just that savvy veteran presence, certainly still capable of playing at, at a pretty high level. And so I, I do wonder when he'll, he'll sign. Uh, other guys that stand out, if you want to look at, linebacker Shaq Leonard yeah uh, it, it is out there Kalias Campbell as far as defensive tackles go he, he heads the list and then there are a few different uh, edge players Emmanuel Agba Yannick Ngakwe Carl mm -hmm. Lawson to name a few so uh, there are if, if you want some trench help Dalton Reisner uh, the guard stands out to me the former Viking and I, I do wonder what what happens with him but there are guys available Chris if, if they are if, if you're in the market for some of these, uh, maybe not starting level guys anymore, but guys that can contribute in a rotational role, a lot of these pieces would help. I think another position that we kind of sometimes forget in free agency because it just kind of gets overlooked in general and people talk about it being downvalued. 
I'm sorry, but Justin Simmons is still on the board right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, somebody needs to get this man because he can change your secondary. And I know that he's in his early 30s. I know that he's he's only got a few more years left where you could say he's probably in his prime. But if I'm an NFL team that's on the cusp, if I'm if I'm if I'm an NFL team that's competing right now, that is just I just hey, I just need one more like big time playmaker in my secondary. Why wouldn't I go get Justin Simmons unless he was unless he's asking for the bank? You know, like, you know, if he's coming out and saying this, but the longer that we go into this offseason, the more problems I think that 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 teams are going to run into trying to say, like, hey, like, you know, if a guy gets injured in training camp or something like that, then Justin Simmons is going to be like, Hey, my, my prize is a little bit higher now. Uh, but he's a playmaker. He's still out there. I think Eddie Jackson's another interesting safety there. And there's other big names like Jamal Adams. But to me, Justin Simmons, the market for him is going to be very interesting to see who gets him. And, you know, if he goes to, let's say he goes to one of these teams that were, that were right there last year, like, what could he do for a team that was right there? Like, you know, like say, I don't know, like just randomly throwing out there, the Texans or the Ravens, you throw him on one of those teams. What does that do for either one of those defenses in secondaries where they already have some playmakers there, but now you're adding in a guy who's been one of the best safeties in football for the past few years. Uh, I certainly think there's, there's going to be some interesting times for those, those teams uh, as far as who will, uh, who will get to sign some of these big name defensive backs, especially, you know, some of these guys like Justin Simmons, who I think the other guys maybe a little bit over the hill. I still think Simmons is kind of in his prime. Sure. I know. I think that's fair. And I think I expected him to land with the Eagles at one point and that hasn't happened. And I'm not sure it will now. I mean, they added two really good DBs in the early yeah. in the draft after uh, bring back a familiar face. Uh, a couple other names I just want to hit on David Bakhtiari. He's just so interesting yeah. because of the injuries, but we know what he can do. Mm -hmm. Does he end up going to New York with the Jets and reuniting with Rodgers? They they have tackles there. They drafted one. Like it doesn't really make sense there. So what happens? I I'm not sure. Donovan Smith, after his year in Kansas City, what happens there? Does he return to the Chiefs? Who knows? But I I think that that's another name uh, to pay attention to. And then it is hard to believe. But Corey Davis uh, is available, the first former first rounder. He unretired mm -hmm. after retiring last year, unretired, and, and is no longer on that list. So could be had Michael Thomas, Hunter Renfro, two slot receivers mm -hmm. that could be interesting, certainly at this stage. And he's still holding on. Julio Jones is still a free agent. So if you guys need some receiver help in Pittsburgh, Chris, there you go. I think certainly that the Steelers, they're looking for an outside guy. I think they have like two slot guys. And uh, Roman Wilson and Calvin Austin that they're happy with right now. The Steelers want an outside guy to kind of replace what they sent away in Deontay Johnson. Certainly could be there. But I think a team, another team that still needs wide receiver help is the Buffalo Bills because they sent away Stephon Diggs. They like go Gabe Davis. This is a team that they they didn't get to add a whole lot this uh, this offseason with, I think, that their, their contract situations, everything that they have going on for them right now. I know they went in and added Curtis Samuel. They drafted Keon Coleman. I think that they need another piece. I think that they need to go, they, they need to try to get one of these guys. They need to be a team that looks at Tyler Boyd right now, uh, in my opinion. The, um, but yeah. here's the other part of the problem. They only got $2.2 .2 million in cap space. So, like, they're in a yeah. rough spot. Yeah, I, I think I wonder if Miami, if Odell leveraged Buffalo against Miami. Ooh. Ultimately going to Miami. I, I do wonder, right? I mean, because that that's someone who – isn't going to be a star anymore from a on-field perspective, but can still play. Mm -hmm. So I, I do wonder that if that fits. And they're also going to lean on Dalton Kincaid a ton at tight end. And they he's are. going to be one of their receivers. But you're right, and I would not shock me if they do add one of those free agents. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Follow wherever you get your podcasts. For Chris Carter, I'm James Rapine. That's going to do it for today's show. And until next time, thank you so much for listening. Locked on NFL.